Up next, a look at Mermaid Adventures by Ilo La Santa and Third Eye Games. All right, Mermaid Adventures is a fantasy role-playing game that was originally kickstarted. It was uh, on a Kickstarter that funded and was published in 2012. So this isn't on the new hotness here. Now, since then, Aloy has released an updated version, uh, Mermaid Adventures Revised, which was based on his PIP System Core rulebook they put out, which is a generic universal role-playing system. Uh, this review, though, is on the original printing of the game because that's one I own. Uh, I personally own, have played, and run the 2012 full-color softcover edition. Now, of the printing I own, you can also get a black and white version and a PDF. Um, though at this point, I'm going to assume you're just going to pick up the revised edition. I would have to assume that unless Aloy has a bunch in his basement, there probably aren't even copies of the edition I have out there anymore. Uh, so indeed, the work to put into the revised copy seems more than worth it. Uh, not in any way to minimize the effort put into the first version, as we'll see. Yeah, fair enough. You know what? I should I should go buy the revised edition because I enjoyed this edition so much as to have it. Now, the one I'm talking about, again, this is only talking about the first printing, the first edition, full color. Uh, it's literally exactly 100 pages long. I don't know. Something about that just made me feel good. Some little part of my brain's like, even number. Um, full color, single column, uh, very large and easy to read font, which I got to admit is awesome for my old eyes. Uh, and it features a ton of awesome artwork from Melissa Gay. There is a very well-produced book, uh, just really nice, um, great layout, visually appealing, lots of white space, uh, easy to read. Like it just, it flows. Like it just, you're going to sit down, start reading this book and finish it. You're, you're not going to put it down and go do something else. The rules are simple, concise, and easy to understand. And one of the best parts is it's written at a level even kids could read and learn to play just from this book. Now, this is a traditional role-playing game, and what I mean by traditional is you have a GM and players. Uh, the GM is called the Navigator in this particular game. Uh, the Navigator is going to run the game, drive, and moderate the story, while the other people are going to play characters in that story. Now, the characters are all merfolk of various types. Now, it's not just your fish, not your standard mer person you're used to seeing, your merfolk. You got your fish folk, but you also have eel folk, urchin folk, jelly folk, octo folk, ray folk, shark folk, and lobster folk. Uh, along with this is a very generic underwater setting. Uh, they've got a, the capital city of Atlantis, as well as a nearby dark lands. Uh, along with that is a small assortment of non-merfolk sea creatures, including the dreaded Kraken. Well, I mean, I guess if you need to have an opposition force of some sort, though I kind of want the Kraken to be misunderstood. Oh, and you could totally run that in this game. The, the the convert the Kraken, find out, you know, the thorn in its paw or in its tentacle and remove it and have a happy Kraken would totally fit this game. Now, character creation is dead simple. Uh, you pick a type of merfolk that you want to play. Um, it gives you starting statistics, which are based on four different things. You've got body, mind, charm, and luck. You get a little couple points that you get to customize it so everyone's a little unique. You pick some starting qualities. Now, qualities are kind of a mix of skills in another game, as well as special abilities. So, like, your quality could be that you're a gymnast and you're really good at gymnastics, but it could also be that you can cast spells. Uh, it's all covered under the same thing. Uh, there's also a series of charts that I personally loved. These are for determining all kinds of random things. Uh, we were talking about cyberpunk earlier in the show today, and it reminds me of the old life path systems in there where you roll up things like what you look like and what color your hair is and how many siblings you have, unique items you carry, preferred weapons, clothing style, and all kinds of stuff like that. Now, there's also a spot on the character sheet to draw your character, which is something my girls thought was amazing. And if you head to the blog post version of this review, you can actually see the pictures my girls drew for their most recent characters. Yeah, honestly, while I can't draw a decent stick figure without a suite of software, I have always enjoyed the act of working out your character's look, either descript descriptively or visually. Now, the mechanics are dead simple. Uh, all you need is some D6 dice, standard sets of dice. Um, the game recommends white and black. Uh, you do need two colors, though I guess technically, like if you can remember, like you could technically just roll the same die multiple times or whatever, but it's definitely easiest if you have two different colors of dice. Now, anytime a task comes up that there's an uncertain outcome, you're going to make a task roll. You're going to build a pool of, I'm going to say white and black dice as if those are the colors you have, but whatever dice colors you want. You're going to grab white dice being good dice. You're going to grab as many of the white dice. Um, 
based on your attributes and qualities you have, which is really simple. You just look, if you have a three in body and you're trying to do something physical, you use that. And then if you have any applicable skills, you get bonus dice, applicable items, you get bonus dice. Then you're going to pair them with the other colored die based on the difficulty of the task set by the navigator. So this is your difficulty. So the more dice in there, the harder it is to do something. Now, all the dice are rolled in one big pool. All that you're looking for is four, fives, and sixes. Those are hits or successes, whatever you want to call them. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a pool and go, how many white successes and how many other color successes did I get? If you have more white successes, you succeed. If there are more of the other color, the task fails. And interestingly, a tie results in a partial success using the improv yes, but system. So yes, you did that, but something else happened because you got a tie. So not a simplistic, but still a simple system. Uh, the maths there are far from simple averages when you start taking color into account, but it's not hard for anyone to. Yeah, as a DM, I wouldn't know if you had a 33 to 180 percent chance to succeed in anything in this game. But you know what? The basics of grab as many dice as your stats say with the bonuses for your stuff. And I'm going to say it's a three difficulty. And there's, of course, a little chart that says, you know, easy, difficult, hard, and how many dice to throw at it. Now, there is also a more detailed conflict system. Now, this, by conflict, I don't necessarily mean fights. Uh, this can be used for social interactions, uh, race, um, uh, a ca any character versus character interaction where two people are competing over something or about something. Now, this involves opposed roles. So you're going to build your dice pool. I'm going to build my dice pool. Sean's going to build his dice pool or the navigator will build the dice pool. And you're going to roll and count your hits. Now, the differences in your hits cause damage to your opponent's attributes. Now, like if you were having a social interaction where you're trying to insult someone, you could be damaging their mind stats. So just to show that it's not necessarily just fighting. Um, now, there is, to go with this, a, a, a bestiary of sorts, though that sounds more adversarial than I want, but there's a small list of friends and enemies and then the statistics for those. So when you do want to have a conflict against an undersea pirate, there's the stats for it. Now, along with all this, Aloy's game includes a ton of great generic gaming advice like stuff like how to be a navigator how to be the dm even stuff like getting your group together and inviting people over and it's very much aimed at someone who's never played a tabletop game a role-playing game specifically and does a great job of onboarding and even better it does this in a very kid-friendly language and tone which there just isn't enough while sure, many people of gaming interest can jump into something more complex right off the bat, there's no reason at all not to have a full entry level or gateway games for RPG mm. the way hobby games, board games have. So, so often, perhaps more so in the past than now, difficulty in an RPG was almost a badge of honor for games. Yeah, yeah and I, I'm not saying that's something that should necessarily be eliminated, but it is nice to have accessible, easy to get into games that make the hobby more inviting to new players. Now, the final thing you will find in the Mermaid Adventure books is a series of short adventures. I think there's only three of them. I'd have to grab my book to check, but these are to give you a taste of what types of stories the navigator can tell and how to implement the rules. It gives you some good examples of what type of die rolls and which um, difficulties to use. And what I like the most about this is the variety of, the, of them because they weren't all beat up the bad guys. Um, for example, the second adventure is the characters take part in the underwater Olympics. And there's a bunch of different events testing their different skills. And the character who wins the most of them is gets the gold medal and gets to be the, the leader, like the, the winner, right? Like gold, silver, bronze, you get first, second, third. Which I just thought, like, there's no adversary there, right? There's, there's none of that conflict you often see. Yeah, it's a great thing to see when, as a society, we're finally beginning to some to question some of the acts of violence we see, even from people considered as heroes of some sort by some. Mm. Uh, while a good story requires conflict, conflict doesn't mean violence. Very true, and we are seeing more and more of that, at least in, in especially the indie gaming scene. Now, overall, I think Mermaid Adventures is a, a awesome introduction to role-playing games for families and young children but i also have to say i think there this game would work for a full a group of full-grown adults and they're gonna have fun with this system like i could see grabbing my monday night group and running a one shot with this and having a great time now what i was even more impressed with besides 
my feelings on the game and how well it worked with our family was when my oldest, who was, I think, eight at the time, asked to read the book herself after playing and was able to take the book upstairs, devour it in an afternoon, and then come downstairs and run it for her sister, which was awesome. Without me interacting, like, I, I watched over their shoulders, but they were able to pick it up and do it for the first time. So, like, basically on our third RPG session, my oldest daughter was DMing her first game because of the the ability to onboard with this such a simple system. Yeah, and as with so many games, the difference between an adult group of role-playing adventure and a family group is really about the depth and complexity of the storyline mm -hmm. so much more than a lot of the system itself. Very true. Now, both my kids love Mermaid Adventures. Uh, this was a fantastic introduction to the to the world of prescripted imaginary play, right? Versus their, their usual running around pretending they're princesses or ponies or spacemen or Jedi. Um, and the concept of using mechanics to determine which way a story goes, which I gotta admit, I'm, I'm glad my kids, I never heard the, I hit you, no, I didn't. It never seemed to happen because I, I kept waiting for that because if it did, I was gonna grab a D6 and go in the other room and say, hey, why don't you use a D6? I never got to that point, but I thought this was a great, introduction to this more structured play i personally can't help but recommend this game to anyone interested in bringing their kids into the world of fantasy role-playing games and i gotta say i think like sean said about being a gateway game i think this would even be a great game to just throw at people who've never role-played before at any age well for a more in-depth look at mermaid adventures head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews